Exit Stage Left, a Kempston Hardwick mystery by Adam Croft, with Robert Dawes as Kempston Hardwick and Stephen Palfreyman as Ellis Flint. Sherlock Holmes, you say? Well, not quite, but I thank you for the comparison. Though if the great detective were here right now, he would, well, no doubt have observed that you are married. Wedding ring. You're over the age of 40. You insist on crossing your legs when you sit down, so I can see the hair on your shins is thinning. You're currently out of work. You jumped at the chance to carry out a murder investigation with a complete stranger, and you were already half cut by six o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Besides, I noticed you had a saver market receipt in your rather expensive Italian leather wallet. Someone who can afford such luxury is only likely to shop at saver market if they're currently out of work. Oh, and you had an upper middle class upbringing, and you served, of course, in the British Army. Gentlemen, welcome to Outsell TV. Thank you. Uh, we have here today Robert Dawes, well-known stage and TV actor, Adam Croft, novelist, and Keith Atak, well-known musician and producer. Uh, I believe you three have got together for a, a col collaboration on a project. So let me start first with with Adam, though. You're you're a best-selling uh, novelist, and your success has come through e-books. How did that happen? Uh, well, I started writing a book about two or three years ago. Um, decided that I wanted to put that online because it's so easy to do these days. Um, just to see what other people thought of it, really, just to try and get it out there. Um, and it sort of ran away with itself a little bit, really. We uh, ended up um, the first two books last year sold uh, just over 130,000 copies online, um, and yeah, now up to up to number three. And, uh, and still selling well, so. Oh, seems to have gone very well for you. Yeah, we're just going to expand it, I think, now with uh, moving into the audio side of things and uh, and see where we can take it, really. Okay. Your third novel is called uh, Exit Stage Left, and uh, that's the one that's been um, uh, recorded for mm. audio books. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So, how did you involve uh, Robert in, in this project? Uh, well, we've been speaking for a, a while about a few things, not, not in a professional sense, have we? But we had, well, I mean, with the connection came through to, to Twitter. Uh, <coughs> I can hear the audience, some of the audience going, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Twitter, but I mean, I use Twitter as a, as a, as a no, um, notice board, really. And I've been following Adam for some time over the last year and found, you know, what, what was happening to him. Fascinating. <coughs> and he made contact and... You know, we, we started um, uh, t the odd tweet, and I, we suddenly started to meet up and have a chat. I'd read um, uh, the books and thoroughly enjoyed them. And uh, when I read Exit Stage Left, I suddenly thought this would adapt quite nicely to um, uh, an audio dramatisation. Um, so it's not an audio book. An audio book is, is, is primarily one solo voice interpreting every character and the narrative in the book and so w what we're doing with Exit Stage Left is, is taking the two uh, new detectives that uh, Adam's created and uh, and uh, putting them into dramatising the story for uh, audio listening and assuming uh, presumably you could be involving other actors in this dramatisation well we're, st we're, st we're starting well once we got that idea that we wanted to do it and the, the book lent itself um, to uh, um, adaptation, um, we immediately thought of going to Keith here, <coughs> who is our technical whiz, and um, uh, to to produce it. And so, Exit Stage Left is going to be the first production uh, that we do. And because of that, we're calling in lots of favours from very talented people <coughs> who are coming to um, give of their time and energies and talents to actually um, create this, this audio dramatisation, which Keith will be producing. So Keith, as a producer, um, what's the process in, in laying down a, a dramatisation of a, a novel such as this? 
Uh, well, it's very similar. I come from a musical sort of background, and um, but I got the script. Bob sent me the script, and um, I just thought, well, uh, I'm just going to approach it like you would like a approach a piece of music. You can see where each scene's going to go, and each uh, each layer of the, which I thought was a great story anyway. Um, and so yeah, I, I just approach it like that. Um, the main thing is we can get the voices recorded well here. We can we can get all the editing done, uh, uh, create an environment for actors to come in and you know and just kind of build the story from from a technical point of view or from my side, but allowing them their creativity and uh, free reign with the story, which you know which is what we're creating. It's, so it's it's working well. Mm. It's good to be involved. <laughs> it is, well, we're, we're enjoying it anyway. So, <coughs> Adam, can you just give us a, a little synopsis of the uh, this third novel? Uh, the book opens in in a pub. Um, I mean, I, I, all the books are. About That's not what first <laughs> attracted us <laughs> to. Uh, well, the books are all based in the local area anyway. Um, the scene opens in a pub. Um, we have our uh, our murdered man, who's uh, Charlie Sparks. He used to be a uh, a prime time television entertainer, he's now perhaps a little bit outdated, not doing quite so well for himself and uh, and, and reduced to performing in pubs on a, on a Friday night. Um, he dies during his act. And our, uh, I'm sure that's happened many a time. No, I've, <laughs> I've died many the times during my act. So. <laughs> but no, our protagonist, Skemson Hardwick, um, gets involved, knows that something isn't quite right and, uh, and along with his sidekick, Ellis Flint, they uh, embark on the process of, uh, of investigating the, the murder of Charlie Sparks, who really wasn't a very well liked man, I think, in many circles. Um, a lot of people have got a lot of different reasons for for wanting him dead, so it's uh, it leads itself quite <coughs> well to, to a bit of mystery. Really. So presumably, people reading the book will be able to identify with local locations. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, so the, the, the main hero being called Kempson Hardwick. Keith. Uh, <laughs> What about timetable? How long is it going to take to lay down this uh, this novel? Well, uh, that's again, uh, <coughs> I, I, it's up to the way the script pans out and the way you know the people come in and go. I, I I've got all the time in the world to do this because it's I think an hour or so you should do it. Yeah, yeah. I think it will be a good. It will be a very intense two days. I think I, so. I reckon, um, and uh, and hopefully we'll be doing some in studio, but we'll be talking. To Keith about it, and uh, it, it's quite exciting because you can go on location. Um, oh, people course, go, yeah. go on location on, <laughs> in, on radio, and it's absolutely true. I mean, I've done it myself at the BBC. You know, you actually go out to a house, something filmed in the house, and you re record it outside, as opposed to the traditional way that a radio drama is done, where all absolutely. the effects added or created. Um, in the in the studio, so this is going to be a mix of of, of, of both of those methods of production. So it's going to be it's going to be part voyage of discovery um, uh, and uh, the sort of exploration of, of how what we can actually create. Um, listening to what Keith is able to do, it seems you know in this technical age of it's uh, anything is, is possible. If you want a volcano to erupt halfway through the scene, you've got <laughs> it. And that's a good point. You know, that's the sound designing going on all the time now. With in 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 all you know music and in corporate videos. And, but I, uh, as like you say, I, what I would really want to do with this is to actually go on location and instead of pulling sounds from an, an existing library, mm. is to actually get involved almost like it, it, it's a, the, a stage production where if somebody falls over I don't or, or somebody gets shot or, or whatever then I don't just go to my never-ending library of gunshots mm -hmm. or you know I, I, I think that we should create uh, on the fly what we're going to be doing. So Adam do, any idea rough idea when this will be available to, to readers? Um, we're hoping at the moment at some point next month in, in March. Yes. We'll, we'll, we will have recorded it within the next two weeks, yeah. and then, you know, um, Keith, to Keith magic. Fact, well, that's, that's where the real hard work goes yeah, in because yeah. he will be actually producing, uh, producing it, and and, and making it will be a, 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 you know available 
online uh, alongside them uh, the, the book itself and uh, and then when we want to um, other things so well, look forward to seeing you all on location uh, recording <laughs> yeah. it and I'm looking forward to uh, reading the book as well so thank you gentlemen can we use your driveway because it's got gravel or somewhere like uh, that absolutely yeah. <laughs> 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 okay thank you thank you thank If I may, can I just say a, a few words? Um, in case you, you don't know, and you probably don't, uh, uh, my name's Robert Dawes, and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, you to uh, our launch this afternoon for Classic Audio Productions and for our first production, the audio dramatization of Adam Cross, Exit Stage Left. So, just a few words really, um, we are a new studio uh, dedicated to pretty much the spoken word. Uh, three of us, myself, Keith Atak, our wonderful genius producer, and uh, Adam Croft, who's the author of our first, um, our first production. Um, it's been an interesting uh, couple of months. We now have, in the middle of our tour, a state-of-the-art uh, studio. Uh, capable of producing uh, an extraordinary high quality of uh, audio product and uh, over the next year we have got a, a raft of uh, productions lined up uh, concentrating in the short term on our mystery and detective work but then going into what we're going to call classic gems which is going to be works like Diary of Nobody, Christmas Carol, Three Men in a Boat etc etc so it's quite exciting Exit stage left came about um, from uh, initially from tweeting. Um, uh, I tweet. I don't know whether many of you do, um, but it is. Um, Go to the doctor. It's, 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 it's a nasty little habit, and it's and, anyway, antibiotic cream does not touch it. Um, so we met on Twitter, and uh, being the shy, mysterious. Uh, man he is, he said, why don't you read my book, Exit Stage Left, which I did and immediately uh, uh, liked it and thought that would make a very good audio dramatisation. We then rather recklessly uh, approached Keith uh, Atak and uh, in a room above a barn, which is now a state-of-the-art studio, but certainly wasn't then uh, two and a half months ago, we got ten wonderful actors Many of them are here this evening, uh, this afternoon, I mean, and um, <laughs> I've already said it, the, the, the afternoon's a new evening, um, <laughs> certainly here, uh, and we set about recording this, uh, partly on location and partly in studio, and it was quite makeshift at times, I have to say, there was a microphone, there was Keith with his laptop, and on certain monologues where we had to get the acoustic right, I had to have a towel over my head, uh, a look which several people have told it works. Um, but uh, we've, we've done it now. It's available to download um, uh, on a, a cross-section of wonderful platforms, including Audible as of tomorrow, but our own website, Kemps and Hardwick. And uh, hopefully we'll go on and produce many other uh, dramatizations and audiobooks uh, to the same level. So uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce um, our author, Adam Croft, who's standing over there. Looking very respectable. Keith Atak is at the back there. If you can put your hand up, Keith. And members of the cast who are with us, we have got the wonderful Stephen Palfreyman, Lacey Bond, Linda Armstrong, Lloyd Morris. Who have I forgotten? Emily Atak. See what I did there. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, apologies for absence uh, from uh, Martha Atak, uh, also from Jeremy and Mark, who can't be with us because they're working, and as they're actors, that's great news. Yeah. Um, so, without further ado, um, I'd like to thank uh, my host this afternoon, which is Russell at the Albion Pub here, uh, voted Bedfordshire's, Bedfordshire's finest pub. I'd also like to thank uh, B&T. Uh, Martin and Michael, who very kindly sponsored this launch for us this afternoon. We're very grateful for that. Um, the Albion, in case you don't know, is where uh, the muse first struck Adam regarding Exit Stage Left. And uh, anyone who's read it and heard it will know that 
inordinate amount of time is spent in pubs, uh, which uh, wasn't the reason I was attracted to the book in the first place, I might have. Yeah. But anyway, thank you all very, very much for coming. We are very grateful for you to being, for, for being here. All those who've supported us, uh, you know who you are, and thank you very much indeed. We're now going to play a little four-minute clip, which uh, our um, uh, producer genius, uh, Keith, has put together, uh, which will give you some idea of the nature of Exit Stage Left. And then, uh, I, at the end of that, I will introduce to you the wonderful Kate Robbins, who will be singing Soho Nights, which is featured um, in, the, in the play uh, and is part of her fantastic album of thank the same name. So here we are, without further ado, here is Exit Stage Left. The small English market town of Tolling Hill has rested on the southern slopes of a green sand ridge for well over a thousand years. From Roman times to the present day, its generations of inhabitants have lived, loved, and died within its boundaries. The old church, the local pubs, the weekly market, and upon the green, the cricket matches contested on weekend afternoons in summer, all suggesting a continuity of life and a comforting surety of safety and belonging. The world outside is where danger lies, the violence of the cities, the wildness of the jungles, the extremes of cold and heat in desert and ice-covered continents, the instability of warring nations and the horrors of starvation and poverty are all elsewhere. My name is Kempston Hardwick, and I have travelled the world many times over and experienced its many dangers. But to know of a danger is to expect it, to be prepared for it, to be on guard against it. But there is, of course, another danger. That danger that appears where no danger should exist. A threat to life that springs from nowhere, its journey hidden, its motives unexplained. This danger exists everywhere. It is around us all the time, even in the safest and quietest of places. Even here, on a summer's evening, in Tolling Hill. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce you now, uh, the wonderful Kate Robbins, who's going to sing a song which we uh, happily used in the, uh, in the production. It's called Soho Night. So please welcome to the stage, Kate Robbins. <laughs> I only got the gig because it's my brother-in-law. <laughs> it's interesting, my lovely ex-husband, who's my best friend, is accompanying me. Hasn't been done for a few years. Oh. Do you know the song, Keith? No. <laughs> oh, well. This is a song from my album called Soho Nights, which is, um... thank you, Peter, that's nice. It's about uh, wandering around Soho when you're drunk. As you do. <laughs> Frith Street to Dean Street to Greek Street to Water Street. Why don't we meet Soho Square? Cocktails are cat bears and peeking in Poland Street. I wear a flower in my hair. If you can find the short way to Vitrovia, you'll see the same folk all day. You know the drove you and knowing me. Showing you it's possible you can make me dance. It's just a typical, and knowing me, showing you it's possible you can make me dance until dawn, until we start to yawn. If you find Fitzrovia, all the folk know ya, and they know, showing you it's possible you can make me dance. Died, 
Martinez from Banks and Taylor Brewery. I see you've got uh, Kempston Holdwick Bitter on sale here today. What's the story behind that? Well, this is uh, this is uh, named after Adam's book. Uh, exit stage left. Copies up here. Only five pounds. Um, Adam's a very regular customer in here, and uh, the book is based around a pub, which apparently is based on the Albion. So uh, it seemed an ideal place to to launch the book and launch a special beer to celebrate it. And I'm sure uh, lots of people this afternoon will, will sample that and, and, and enjoy it. I hope they will. Cheers. Thank you. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, we got it. We got it. Let's do one more. So we're here. Yeah? No, we're going to grab some of you for a quick chat now, I think. Let's go to Northampton. Can I just do one more, though? Will you make your eyes as big as possible? Right, yes. Right, yes. Yeah. Adam Croft, you're the author of uh, Exit Stage Left. It's been a great launch here today in the Albion. Uh, did you think there was going to be such a, a great buzz about the book when you first wrote it? No idea at all, no idea. I mean, when I wrote it, it was um, towards the end of 2011, and the book came out at Christmas. It wasn't until the end of January that, uh, that Robert approached me and said that he, uh, he thought it'd make a great radio play, so we had absolutely no idea it would uh, take off in this way. I mean, the, the previous two books had been successful, but um, for it to be uh, dramatised and to be put into a different format with so many talented actors and people involved, no idea, no idea, no. I understand it's available in print, uh, as a standard e-book for your Kindle, and then there's a dramatisation as well. That, that's really good to have it in three different formats. Not many authors have done that. No, especially self-published authors. I mean, many uh, published authors don't get to go to sort of audio book and definitely not audio dramatisation. But um, I mean, personally, what I've been trying to do is... Um, uh, there's, a, there's a big movement at the moment in the self-publishing industry, um, people publishing their own books, putting them out there, um, and publishers are saying that certain things won't work, and just trying to prove them wrong one by one. Um, and as far as we're aware, this is the first self-published book which has been dramatised in such a way, certainly to, to the extent that this has. So we're all really proud of, uh, of what we've done and, and how far it's gone, and hopefully we can just carry on going further with it. And I understand that uh, Sleep a Little Amptil has now got a state-of-the-art studio run by Keith Atak, so you'll be able to do future books there. 
yeah, well, we've, we've, we're already working on uh, on future ones, um, and the, it just sounds absolutely fantastic. The studio is looking great. Um, there's nothing like it outside of London at all. So we're really excited about the the future projects that we can put out there, um, future books that we can adapt. Um, it, it's just looking really exciting for the future, yeah. And we don't seem to be short of talent in this particular area, though, do we? No. No, it's, it's great. I mean, we, we drew on that for the audio dramatisation. Obviously, Robert's local, um, Emily's local, uh, Keith as well. Um, we're really lucky to have such sort of talented and well-known people locally who could uh, get involved and um, and just give up their time to um, to help us with the project. It's, it's, it's really, really pleasing. Good. Well, I hope um, this is now going to bump it back up into the bestsellers list. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Emily Atak, uh, yeah. nice to see you here at the uh, launch today. Can you tell us your involvement in this project? Well, um, my my dad, Keith Atak, uh, and my uncle Robert Dawes and Adam Croft, the author, um, they've set up this studio and they wanted to um, do Adam's story. And there was a character called Roxanne De Larue that needed filling. So I thought, yeah, I'll. Um, they asked me to do it, and yeah, I was happy to do it. So has it been a good project to work on? I understand that uh, a lot of it's been done on location and some in the studio. Was it, was it fun to do? Yeah, well, I, I, was, um, I was one of the unfortunate ones. I didn't get to go on location. Um, we stayed in the studio. But no, yeah, it was lovely. It was really nice to work with members of my family. I've never done that before. Um, and all the other actors that were involved were really lovely too. Um, yeah, it was great fun. It was really fun. Very nice. And it's so great that there's so much talent around here. We've got Adam, obviously, as a writer, and all you guys as actors. I mean... In, central beds here we've just got so much talent it's unbelievable it's funny isn't it you wouldn't you wouldn't think you know such a small little town could could cough up you know um but yeah no it's it's lovely it's really nice to be a part of it um yeah it's nice so obviously star of in between us star of dancing on ice uh your film premiered last week top 10 fhm beautiful women in the world and you live in flitic what's that all about well uh, everybody always asks me this and um, I just don't feel ready yet to kind of you know I'm still very young I still I miss home too much when I'm away so um, and I am away quite a lot working and I the one thing I when I am away I, I, the one thing in the back of my head is just you know looking forward to coming home so I think that's telling me I'm not quite ready to move yet but when I do move it'll be London but for now I'm uh, I'm happy drinking in the Blackbirds and Flitic so <laughs> Nice to have the support of your family as well. Emily, thanks very much indeed. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Stephen Booth, as an established crime writer, it's great to see you here at the launch of Exit Stage Left. Uh, what do you think of the dramatisation they've done? I think they've done a fantastic job. I mean, the, the book is great anyway that Adam's done, and the, the production quality on the, on the recording is just brilliant, I think. And how about some of your books being dramatised? Are, well, are you thinking of that? I, I'm, I'm very excited about the possibility that it might be doing uh, one of my books, so I'm, I'm here to talk about, about that, and I, I hope that does come off in the future, yes. It'll be great. Okay, I, th I think it's just so good to have uh, books available in all these different formats, print, e-books, and the dramatisations as well. I, I, from an author's point of view, I think it's vital that um, readers can get your books in whatever format they want them in. And I do know there are a lot of readers who like to listen to audio books, um, particularly when they're driving, perhaps, or you know, or people with reading problems, uh, their visual problems. They're very, very popular audio books now. Well, we look forward to uh, hearing some of your books uh, being dramatised by this talented crew here in Amtel. Yes, I hope so. Thank I hope so. Thank you. Hope so. Thank you. Kate Robbins, you're part of the talent that's got involved in this uh, project. With in a the small way. In okay. a small way. What have you contributed to the uh, um, then? My track uh, from my title album, Soho Nights, which that is available. <laughs> <laughs> um, the title track, Soho Nights, was featured in the um, Exit Stage yeah. Left. So they used my music, which was nice, because I wrote it and, you know. And I understand... Um, your ex-husband, Keith, has done the, the rest oh, of the yes, soundtrack. Yes, Keith. Um, I'm still Mrs. Atac, even though we're divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Keith's done the music for the um, production, and uh, he's a great musician. And, um, yeah, I mean, we still work together occasionally on bits and pieces, so, yeah. Listening to uh, a piece from the, uh, the book earlier, the, the production qualities with uh, your music, Keith's production and the actors is, yeah. is so high quality. Yes, I think that... 
Well, I mean, the, when you think about it, I mean, Keith's been working professionally in that industry for nearly 35 years. Robert Dawes has been doing it since the year dot. <laughs> and I think really, all together, you know, you've got a very professional team there and it's bound to sound good. Yeah. I was really pleased to see in the brochure for the stables that you're going to be playing there later in the year. I am. I love the stables. Um, Wavendon, is that Buckinghamshire? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, yeah. But still, it's um, a place where I hope all my friends will come down from Amptill and Flitwick and surrounding areas to come and see me at the stables. Um, September, I can't remember the actual date. September something, 20-something. Sorry, I've forgotten the date. <laughs> well, I'll definitely be there, so I'm sure it'll be a great night. Good. Oh, Thank no. you, Kate. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Stephen Palfreman, star of the West End. You've recently been in Blood Brothers. So how do you get involved in, in this project? Um, I, well, I got involved because I was working with um, Bob's wife, Amy, in Blood Brothers. And um, they told me all about this, this new uh, dramatisation they've written. And, um, yeah, I came up and did it a few months ago. And it's, it's, I had a fantastic time doing it. And, um, and it's brilliant. And I'm so excited to sort of hear the final product. Because uh, with the music with, that Keats added is just, uh, you know, it's just it's fantastic, fantastic. So have you been published uh, in the Ethernet before? Out uh, there as an e-book? No, not at all. <laughs> not me, no. Um, but it was uh, great fun, um, and it was wonderful working with Bob. Who, um, you know, it's it's I'd never done a radio or so, you know this sort of audio dramatization before, and to work with somebody like Bob opposite Bob uh, I was only up here for four days recording it but I learned an amazing amount from him just watching him and the way he did it uh, was fantastic absolutely fantastic and um, to hear now the final product of all that hard work with all the other actors that came on board that day <clears throat> and bear in mind we did most of it in one day uh, with all the other actors the other sort of eight actors um, it was fantastic and um but it was just—it was great fun to do, and it's so lovely to hear the sort of final product with all Keith's brilliant work afterwards with the post-production and the and the music. Brilliant. Uh, Keith's got a great studio here, and I know that Bob's very keen to uh, publish uh, as many dramatizations as he can. Do you think you're going to be involved in the future? Um, well, I hope so. <laughs> I better be. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, and I know that the studio has now been revamped since I was last here. Uh, about a month ago and uh, yeah so I'm looking forward to sort of and of course I'm looking forward to, to the story continuing with the, the Kempston and uh, Ellis um, relationship so I'm looking forward to that you know I'm looking forward to that developing in the next series of books that I know that Adam is is apparently writing at the moment so yeah yeah it's, it's good it's great okay Stephen thanks for your time thank you cheers mate Keith Atak everyone's been full of praise for your studio facilities that you've uh, just opened in Amptel well, I'm really, really pleased with them. Yeah, we um, we we got it together with. Uh, well, I, I was in there teaching and writing music, and I, I, a bit of a, a flight of faith, really. I, I came to Amptill because of the family, and um, I thought I've got to set up something, you know, uh, as a musician. And I um, I kind of took it on, and um, not knowing quite what was going to happen and I, I, I started taking on some guitar students and I was doing a little bit of uh, corporate music and and stuff uh, in between my touring so um, and then uh, then Bob got involved and, and Adam came on the scene and uh, and it just it took off from there it allowed me to be able to develop the facility a bit more for a broader sort of spectrum of uh, things like the audio drama and uh, and take it away from my own per for my own personal sort of use into something as I say for more for the broader spectrum of things with Bob and all the talent that he brings and and Adam so uh, I'm really pleased. It it was a, it turned out to be a great move. It was a gamble at first, you know, as these things are. I didn't know whether I could, you know. I thought I'm going to take on premises. I'm going to do this. What, what am I going to do with them? And but no. And I it gave me the chance to be able to utilise what I can bring to the table with them. So I'm really pleased. And I love Amptill as well. I really do. You know, it's. Um, I, in fact, I've just moved here now, but. I was travelling back. I lived in Northampton. I was setting up the studio every day. I was teaching till six, seven at night. Then I was driving back to Northampton every night. Then I was coming back, you know, first thing in the morning every day. But now I'm 
I'm just right over the shop now, so it's, it's great. Well, that's good. Um, the dramatisation is putting a, a different angle on e-books, isn't it? Because you can yeah. download it to your Kindle and read it, that's fine, but uh, the high-quality production that you're putting with it, with these books, is, uh, I think is a really good niche market. Well, thanks, yeah, and actually um, I made it my business to... Um, to listen to audiobooks and see the way the formats were being done and because I'm from I'm from a, I'm fr I've done film scores before and uh, and from uh, corporate kind of sound design and things like that I I, I think in certain ways there was I, I saw this huge kind of um, gap that needed to be filled between audio dramas like you get like the radio 4 kind mm. of things and the audiobooks that are just straight narrative reads and I, I just thought, I was discussing with Bob, and I said, why, why don't we just kind of um, augment this a little bit with, you know, with, with, with uh, rather than it just be a straight read, let's, let's create the atmospheres and create, this, create the environment of, uh, the, the, uh, create the environment to go with what, the, the, uh, what was going on, you know. Uh, it was great fun. And... Uh if I might mention your ex, Kate Robbins, oh, uh, yeah. her music's on the soundtrack, well, and yeah, your lovely really. daughter, Emily, as well. You've had a chance to uh, perform with her as well, so how's that been? It's, it's always been great, Kate, and I think it's, it's, no, it's no secret. Kate and I are great friends, and, you know, I mean, uh, as I say, it, it was Kate, Kate with her living here already and the kids, and um, we've always I think I think because of our uh, musical uh, background and our, our kind of creative we have so much of that in common you know and um, I think it's kind of made the, the survive the hiatus you have when you when you know you can't sort of I mean we really did realize that we can't quite live together but we, we, we can work together and be great mates and be still be parents for the kids and you know, who we're all really proud of. You know, they're all doing well. Emily's doing great, as, you, as we all know. But there's Martha and there's George. George comes on the road with me, and uh, he tours with me, and he works hard, and he, you know, he works with the crew. And so, yeah, it, we're much. We're still a, in many ways, we're still a big family unit. But it's because I think because of our shared kind of, uh, it's the the creative common that we all have together, as well as. As anything else, you know, it's it's got over a lot of the problems. Okay, that's really good. I look forward to many more dramatised books coming out of your studio. Thanks, yeah, Keith. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Robert Dawes, great excitement here this afternoon in Ampton. We had, we had the paparazzi here for the launch. It was it, it went so well, didn't it? Well, it was good fun. I know that much. Um, yes, it was lovely. I mean. Um, I don't know about the paparazzi, but there's certainly enough interest in, in, in the project, which is great. So, um, yes, we're very grateful for that. So what are the plans now for the future with uh, your involvement with Keith Atak in the studio here in Amtel? Well, Classic Audio Productions has been set up um, to produce the spoken word, um, uh, be it as audio books or be it as audio dramatisations. Um, it's an area that I've always been interested in and Keith has been interested in too. Uh, there's a, a huge area of, of literature that isn't necessarily covered uh, in the audio sense and there's been such an explosion of interest in, in, in listening um, against the odds actually because everyone said it's, it's, people like to see things but uh, because of the increase, massive increase in, in smartphones throughout the world iPads and various other MP3 players uh, throughout the world people are, are, are wanting good stories traditionally uh, they've been produced by uh, publishers who usually take their top authors and make a make a, an audio book and we are we are looking to um, do audio books uh, from uh, published authors self-publishing authors and we've now got a state-of-the-art studio in which we can do that and uh, we've got access to the most wonderful um, vocal talent uh, um, uh, in, in the acting world and broadcasting world so we've got a raft of projects that we're going to be doing we're going to be over the next two or three months specializing in uh, crime and mystery and detective series because that's been our first one with Adam Croft uh, doing his first book. We've also got 
um, Stephen Booth, who's an international best-selling author, who wants us to do one of his books. Stephen Leather, who is also an international uh, best-selling author, who wants us to do one of his books. So it's beginning to develop, and coming up to Christmas, we're going to be producing a, a range of audio uh, productions called Classic Gems, which are going to be classic humorous novels or or specific um, festival Christmas novels, things like Diary of a Nobody, um, Three Men in a Boat, um, Christmas Carol, Oscar Wilde short stories. So that's going to be another uh, area. So that's what we are producing, but we also are really, really interested in talking to people who've written a book, who um, they've either published it themselves or they've had it published and and it's uh, it's maybe out of print or it hasn't got an audio print, basically. And people who may be interested in having their book out there earning the money, quite frankly, as, as well as actually getting their voice literally heard. I think there's probably a lot of talent out there who's... Uh uh, work can be, can be translated this way. Well, uh, yes. I mean, uh, already we're, we're 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 receiving phone calls from people who say, "Look, I've got, I've got a book. I've written this. I've, I've got that, or whatever. This was published uh, three years ago. It hasn't had an audio book. It did very well, and we'd like to relaunch it, and, and we'd like to actually have an, an audio presence." So th- you're quite right. There's an awful lot of uh, of very talented storytellers. And I think one distinction uh, in writing is that, that uh, the world of, of publishing and bestseller lists are, are made of specific, uh, made up of specific writers, obviously with huge international appeal. Now there are thousands upon thousands of, of great storytellers, people who tell stories, um, who don't get an audio voice, either because their publishers haven't chosen to do so with them. Uh, and so it's been an area that's been been close to them. Hopefully, we're going to open that up. And it's not just fiction. Uh, you know, we're open to to, to approaches for uh, non-fiction, uh, biography, autobiography, uh, etc. So um, we've got the studio, uh, and we, we've got the know-how. I haven't, but I know someone who <laughs> has. Um, and so we're, we're quite excited about the, the the sort of possibilities. Well, we look forward to. Uh future books being dramatised by uh, yourself and Keith and obviously Adam, there'll be some sequels now for yeah. the Kempston Hardwick uh, character Adam's already working on his second Kempston Hardwick novel um, so yes, we'll be doing that hopefully over the summer OK, Robert, thanks very much indeed Thanks, Chris. Pleasure <laughs>
Sie ist 